And I love New York, it's a great city, but London's a great city as well. And I'm a South Londoner, so cherry on top. I want people to feel like, where is season two? I need season two yesterday. There's people in this world of superpowers. If you can save her, you need all four. If one dies, she dies. Find them. Before it's too late. Just to go right, right from the beginning, what were each of your kind of first reactions when you saw the scripts for these six episodes? Um, I thought it was really exciting. It's five people, none of them know each other, they're all living very normal lives, and then suddenly they all get superpowers, but they still have to go on living those normal lives. They still have to like go to work and like figure out that whilst wondering how do I do with these powers? Why do I have them? And also, um, how do I use them to take care of the people that I love? Mm. Um, and I just thought that was really exciting. Also, it all happens in London. It all happens yeah. in South London. Mm. And that's really exciting. And knowing that we were gonna actually shoot in South London as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I just feel like, just echoing what Addy said, I just feel like, yeah, it's just five different people that I could recognize and I could see. I'm like, oh, these are like real people. I feel like I kind of know them as well. And, um, and obviously we've got the, the power elements and stuff like that. So I just feel like it's a world where I'm familiar with, but it's also heightened at the same time. And there's nothing more exciting than that as well. So, yeah. and I'm a South Londoner, so cherry on top. Yeah. And obviously you're no kind of stranger to yeah. sci-fi having yeah, been yeah. involved in Doctor Who. Did, did having been involved in a show like that in any way prepare you for this kind of thing? Or are uh, they just quite different? Nothing can prepare you for this. I feel like, you know, it's a different world, you know, it's a, it's a definitely different world, you know, like Doctor Who so much as the universe and the aliens and different timelines and going back into the past and stuff like that. But this is very much grounded in real life situations and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, you know, nothing can prepare you for delivering a parcel and then, you know, almost getting mugged and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like real life situations. But other than the green screen, maybe, mm. green screen acting can prepare me. But yeah, other than that, I just feel like it's its own thing, it's its own world it's very fresh and it's very new so yeah i just took it for where it was yeah yeah, yeah. we're obviously not going to go into any spoilers or anything yeah. but what do you guys hope viewers kind of feel after watching the final episode what what kind of emotions do you feel that they'll, that they'll be feeling oh it's, it's going to be a mixture man yeah how do you say without spoiling it? i don't know man it's i just... want them to be affected yeah, immensely sure. uh i want them to f i want them to connect to the love yeah. on screen um, it's a roller coaster. I think that's the best way I can. I want them to feel impassioned, though. Like, for, yeah. the, for you know. Yeah. Like, I want them to yeah. be like, come on, let's go. Yeah. I want them to be on Michael's side. Yeah, and there's a lot of kinder, kinder surprises. Is it surprises? Kinder surprises? Kinder, 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 kinder surprises. Yeah. Kinder surprises. Yeah, whatever, yeah. There's that like kind of surprises in there, do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know why. So I random. That. So there's a lot random. of surprises in there. There's a lot of surprises. Can of surprises? <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but yeah. There's a lot of surprises in there that I'm going to show the audience and I think we've been setting up this world so much, so by the time we get to the last couple of episodes, like the reveals, the surprises, the the new information that you're going to receive is, is so shocking. It's like, oh wow. So yeah, you're definitely in for a surprise for sure. Yeah. And you should watch it quickly before it comes out because you don't want people to ruin it for you. Mm. Yes. And yeah. I feel like you're going to get that a lot with the show. Yeah. What was it about the kind of sci-fi genre that made you want to embrace it and, and kind of head into the sci-fi space? It's just a sickest genre, man. <laughs> I used to, do you remember Around the Twist? Oh, it was a big show back in the day and it was such a, like every episode was something different. Someone might get powers, someone mm. might get a magic wish. I love shows like that. Like, mm. I used to be a kid that would be under my bed and dream that I would get a superpower. And I watched all the Marvel, I watched all the DC. I used to get the X-Men cars when I was in school. So I love the genre. I just didn't feel like I saw a real version of real life in that genre. Mm. Which is so when it came to Supercell, it's like I still want to have the great powers, but more importantly, I want to believe these characters. Like, because if I get powers now, I'm not thinking to get spandex, cover my face, and go stop a bridge from falling down. I will stop that bridge from falling down, but before I do that, can I quickly just get some money and sort out my life, which is a mess right now, <laughs> and then I'll sort that out. So I went for the So for me, I never saw anyone doing that. It's always like, got these powers, we need to save the world. Like, whoa, charity starts at home first, guys. So let's just sort this out first. So, and I feel like that's what Super Soul is. You've noticed no one's trying to save the world. They've all got their own issues, their own problems, and they're trying to deal with that. No one has even thought about being a superhero right now. <laughs> 
So um, that's the type of show I wanted to watch. Yeah, and specifically setting it in South London, was that quite important for you as super well? Super important yeah. because every single show with superpowers in, in the world that were at big scales in New York. Mm. And I love New York, it's a great city, but London's a great city as well. We've got everything New York, New York has, but for some reason, we don't feel like our city is big enough to tell these stories. So I was like, nah, nah, I'm gonna set pace. So we're gonna see South London really as it is, all the vibrancy, the attitude, the personality mixed with South superpowers. Mm. And when it came to casting the show, what was it about Tolson Cole in the lead role that made him the perfect fit? Had you seen him in Doctor Who, obviously another big sci-fi show, or was that? I didn't watch Doctor Who, but the first time I ever laid eyes on Tolson Cole was in a short film that was really good. And then I saw him in an American show called um, 61st Street. Mm. And it was really when he came to audition, it's the way he took direction. So he done his version of it, which was great. But I said, can you do it like this? And he done it. I said, can you do it like this, but like this, but with a bit of this? And he done it. And he do, and it's not every, even great actors, for some reason, so sometimes they can't adapt to a director. They're so stuck in a way to tell it a certain way, but he could come out of that, even though he rehearsed it one way, you tend to do it like that, he would just do it like that. And that's what stood out, where it's like, this is, this is Michael, this is him. And um, I think it was a great choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and in terms of, you know, do you kind of see scope for, for more seasons of this show? Were you env envisaging it as a one-off? What's the kind of, what's nah, the idea? Nah, what's I've, the... Got, I've got a three season story in my head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Three season story in my head. So that's not saying it can't go over, but right now I know where it goes to when it goes, to, I know where it, what the story is from up to season three. Yeah. And was that the case from the very beginning when you first started planning? I, it I told him that I want three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we have to see what season one, how season one performs. But I know I've very much made it clear that I want to do three seasons, so minimum. The, the story gets, you know, quite dark quite quickly. Was yeah. that something that, that appealed to you? And, and, and what, um, yeah, what can you kind of tease for, for fans about some of the kind of dark turns that the, 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 the series oh. Yeah, I feel like we set up the world of, I think it's just a different contrast of, of different worlds we kind of set up, you know? I think like we, we got love, we got parenthood, we got sisterhood, you got yeah. camaraderie between two friends, and then we have elements of dark, so I just feel like we have like a healthy balance of like different shades of life and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But the dark elements and, you know, the light elements also kind of balance each other, but they're also like necessary to drive the story forward, you know? Mm. and. Yeah, when you got those recipes for that, it's a good show, you know? What, what would you say are the biggest tests that each of your character kind of faces um, in, in the show? What would you say the biggest tests? I think for Dion, it's um, not giving up on Michael, even though mm. she's not getting any uh, information from him. He's not really speaking to her or conveying mm. his feelings. So for her, it's just continuing to be patient and to be there and to kind of coax him into talking to her. I think that's her biggest yeah. challenge. Trying to get the five together, man. Trying to get the five together to save the love of his life. So yeah, that's the, that's the journey. Mm. Yeah, and you mentioned obviously South London plays such a big part in, mm -hmm. in the series. What, did you have any kind of particularly favorite moments from filming in, in South London and, and what, yeah, what was that kind of whole experience like? Uh, for me, you know, with the Tower Boys kind of hang out, like I used to hang out there when I was a kid, um, my friends used to go to a school down the road and we used to go there and play football. So like, it was just kind of weird because it's the area that I lived in and I grew up in. So to kind of be there was a, like a full circle moment. And I remember one of the days I called my friends to come and visit me on set. And then we was just laughing about all the memories that we had in that particular occasion itself. And it's like, it's crazy how like, you're now filming in this set. So it was like almost surreal in a sense. So yeah, so it was kind of nice to have those kind of moments, you know? Yeah. The first scene in episode one, that was a really fun day, I think, yeah. filming outside Deptford. Yeah, that was a nice day, yeah. outside the station. It just felt like, because I'm not from South London, but obviously there, I know there, and I've been there so many times. So for me, that was like, I'm outside. And I, I, I actually shot inside the station as well. Did you? Yeah, because I come from, from the station, station on the yeah. phone. So that's later though. Later on, I come from that station on the oh, phone, yeah, in a different, yeah, in a different episode. Yeah. And I was like, I'm filming inside Deptford, like it just was, yeah, it just was, it was cool. It was mm. just cool, yeah. Where, where you've got a series like this where, you know, one person has, has written this, created it, directed it, how much does that passion come across on set from Ratman? How, how Every much day. That, yeah. All the time. Every day. There's Every not second. a moment it don't, yeah. it don't, it don't <laughs> dip, it just, it just stays here and it keeps on increasing yeah. more and more and more and more, which is very useful, which is very, you know. It spurs you on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's infectious almost, mm -hmm. you know. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah let's. 
yeah. It makes you really want to get it right yeah, as well. For sure. Because in general, like you care, obviously, whatever character you play, you always care, whatever story you're telling, you always care. But then when the person who has like literally created this world is with you and has like curated every single part of this story, mm. you're like, no, you care so much and you've put it in my hands. So I don't have a choice. Like I have to care and I really want to get this right. Mm. And I, that's like a really good spirit to have on set. So, yeah. Yeah, and without going into spoilers, I know apparently we see some big twists in episodes five and six, some big moments. How do you kind of hope that fans will will feel after watching the end of the season? What would, Honestly, you know? I want people to be like, oh my gosh. I just want them people to think that that was crazy. Like, that was an emotional ride. I want people to feel shocked. Mm -hmm. I want people to feel like that was a great show. I want people to feel like, where is season two? I need season two yesterday. That's, that's the energy you feel. Because when I finish watching it, that's how I feel. I feel like, oh man, man, we need to see the next bit, man. We need to give people the next bit. So I hope that's how they feel. Yeah. Um, you know, in the first episode, we see this quite haunting version of a future London. How, yeah. how did you kind of decide how to bring a future version of London to life? What was the kind of, the, the thought process behind what you wanted it to look like and, and what you wanted to do? It was, I wanted to show these guys years in the future where they've mastered their powers but it couldn't be heightened. It's not like in the future they've all got masks on and they like the caves. They kind of dress no they still dress normal. Mm. But you can see that they're focused, they're a team. It was about so the aim was to show that they're a team, that they're much more powerful, much more controlled, and they're in the middle of some sort of war. Mm. And I wanted it well, you know how we always see things like the Times Square's monitors? I wanted them at our monitors, which is the Piccadilly monitors. Mm. And it's just important to make it look like that, man. And I feel like um, I watched that scene, I'm always, it always makes you smile because I remember writing that scene very, very early on in the process and happy that it managed to stay in. Yeah. And, and did you, was, were there any kind of particular moments from, from filming in South London that stood out to you as, as, as moments you enjoyed, kind of scenes you really enjoyed shooting? What were the I highlights loved the, from the process? I loved when we shot in Peckham mm -hmm. um, because we got to lock down the whole high street. Yeah. Like, it was just a moment to have the whole high street shut down. We had a, our own buses. It's like when you see them on pedal bikes riding through, that was Peckham High Street. And it was just nice to know that, raw there was times where I would come to this area and it was like, it was this, and now I'm locking off the high street to film a massive scene for my Netflix series. It was like a 360 moment for me that, you know, that I've arrived somewhere. And in terms of, you know, watching the show, will you be kind of following along with people's reactions that it comes out or do you prefer to kind of steer back once you once you put it out I, into the world? I need to it? do exactly what you said on the latter. <laughs> yeah. But oh gosh, I'm gonna have to like, I need to know. I hate I hate negativity, like you would speak to Jamie and the rest of the team, I tell them anything negative just don't tell me. Mm. But I'm gonna have to know what the world knows. I need to know how people take to it, you know, and it's harsh because um you can get 99 positive comments, one negative comment will stick with you for the whole week. Mm. So it's harsh, but um, I probably will. I shouldn't, but I probably will be yeah. following what, what the people are saying. I don't think I'll be able to avoid it. You know, I think people are gonna find me and to tell me how they feel. Yeah. Did, did you also think, feel it was important to have, you know, representation for the black British community within the sci-fi genre? Is that something that maybe we've not seen so much? In Massively, the man. If you, if you actually look back at it at a UK show, when have you ever seen a UK sci-fi? Not that there's a lot of them anyway, mm. but with a black cast. And yeah. even take out the UK, even going to the States, mm. you could probably think of Black Panther. You could probably think of Black Lightning. Mm. The box stops there. Let's be honest, it, it's there. And it's like, why can't black people be in a sci-fi space? So the hopes that the show does really well when it just, it's just the beginning, there'll be others. Finally, um, in terms of, you know, you've got a great cast assembled for, for the show. How important was it to have, you know, each cast member, the kind of the right chemistry between between all the all the cast? What was it kind of, were there kind of chemistry reads? How did you go about creating that? There had to be chemistry reads with Michael and Dion, so yeah. Adi and Tosin, it was important that their love Radiated. If you didn't believe their love, you wouldn't believe his mission, which means you don't really believe the show. So we've done chemistry with them. They knew each other years before mm. this. So that really helped. Yeah. There had to be chemistry with the Taser and the Tower Boys, because mm -hmm. they're meant to be brothers. Uh, so it's important that they believe each other, they get along, and they can argue like brothers. Same with AJ and his father, Andre. Same with Sabrina and Charlene, because they're family. But the good thing was, for the five in general, they didn't need to know each other. So we try to keep them apart. So when they do come together, like you see in episode four, have you seen episode four, right? When they're all in the room together, they don't know each other and that's okay. We don't want them to know each other. We don't want them to be comfortable. They need to look on edge. So for the relationships, of course, we have the chemistry really, but for the five, the lead five heroes, 
we didn't want them to be close. We wanted them to get to each other and they're still figuring it out while they're in this group of how this group comes together to become one. Yeah.